episode of Toy Box Movie Reviews is brought to you by Eternal Curse. Not a fan of either romance or fantasy stories, Toy Thomas's debut novel Eternal Curse combined these two styles to hold my attention from beginning to end. Author Neil James. Eternal Curse is the story of a man who may just be the answer to a spiritual war swiftly heading his way, but for now he just wants to be a man. Eternal Curse Giovanni's Angel, available online and wherever books are sold. Hello and welcome to another episode of Toy Box Movie Reviews. Today I'm reviewing the film Burn After Reading as part of a monthly blog hop called Mock Squid Soup, A Film Society. You can check, to the, you can check the description below to learn more about that film society. This review will consist of me asking myself 10 questions and answering them to the best of my ability. Alright then, so let's get started. Number one, what is the film about? <laughs> this film is about a whole lot of something that doesn't really make sense. It's a bit outrageous and ridiculous, so of course it's hilarious. To sum things up as best as possible, I'd have to say that this is the story of opportunism and its great downfall. More on the specifics of the characters later, but here's a quick example of why I think this story is all about selfishly and dangerously reaching for opportunities. So, Osborne gets demoted and uses it as an opportunity to walk away from a job he doesn't like. Since Osborne leaves his job, his wife uses this as an opportunity to file for divorce and then some. Linda and Chad find information that might be valuable and take the opportunity to exploit it without knowing what it is. Katie's on the prowl, so Harry uses it as an opportunity to have more adulterous sex with her. Harry's wife goes out of town and Katie is a busy woman, so uh, he, speaking of Harry, has a perfect excuse to take on another lover in Linda. Seriously people, it just goes on and on. Number two, what did I think of the title, poster, and or trailer? I've seen several posters for this movie, but the one I found on Wikipedia was new to me. It makes it seem almost as though this might actually be a serious spy, spy thriller if it weren't for the wild and loud font used. My favorite poster for this film shows a close-up of Brad Pitt sipping from his Jamba Juice straw. After seeing that, you know that this movie is either going to be funny, weird, or both. Listed as a black comedy, I think the term dark is a better fit here. It's easy to imagine that there may be moments of laughter mixed in with moments of unease and even terror. What did I think of the main characters and how the actors performed them? I could seriously go on for days talking about this cast. I pretty much like everything I've seen John Malkovich in, but I know I haven't seen all of his films. As for the rest of the cast, what's not to like? I mean, really. George Clooney, Fra Francis McDormand, um, Tilda Swinton, Brad Pitt, Richard Jenkins, J.K. Simmons, Elizabeth Marvel, David Rache. I'm totally not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, all of this makes the movie something special. Don't quote me on this, but I seriously think it must be some kind of law that says you cannot make a Coen Brothers film without Francis McDormand in it. In any case, it's always a comfort to see her playing a role written just for her. 4. What did I think of the direction and cinematography? Well, there's no secret about the style in which Joel and Ethan make their movies. There's always a sense of danger, something odd or off-kilter, and even subtle bits of humor in the most inappropriate and inopportune times. Now, don't let me give you a wrong impression here. This is one of the milder of their films in terms of violence. There are still two scenes shot with um, that specific Cohen precision that will deliver a bit of shock and dismay upon scene. No one else in Hollywood seems to handle violence the way they do, 
Whether that's a good thing or not, I'm not sure, but it's a fact. What did I think of the soundtrack and score? To be perfectly honest, I paid no attention to the score of this film, and I don't even think it has a soundtrack. I'm too lazy at this point to research it just for this review. I have a feeling though that, that there was a bit of something quirky playing in the back to, to set the mood for the unexpected and unpredictable. What did I like about the story as a whole? I guess what I liked most about the film was the realistic absurdity of it all. The people in this film weren't very likable, but I didn't really dislike any of them either. I felt like everyone, except for Ted, kind of got what they deserved. Even when Linda finally gets what she's been scheming for, she'll still be unhappy and alone. It's almost sad, but ironic enough to be funny and satisfying. Does that make me weird? What did I not like about the story? I didn't care much for Ted's sex device and Linda's easygoing acceptance of it. I get it. People are into different things, but it didn't seem to me they knew enough about each other in order to go there. Even if I was into something like that, let's say adventurous, <laughs> I'd be appalled that some guy would automatically assume that I was only after one or two hookups. Those aren't exactly dates they were going on, so... Um, <laughs> would I recommend this movie to others? I think I would recommend this movie, but I would be selective about it. I make a point to know what my friends and family and associates lean towards. Um, I would be cautious to recommend it to someone who doesn't share my inquisitive taste in films. However, I would have no problem letting other people know that I personally enjoyed it. 9. If yes, who and what would I rate this movie? This is strictly an adult experience. Um, even if the sexual themes and violence were removed from this film, I still think it will require a more mature mind to comprehend and appreciate all that the film has to offer. On a scale of one to five movie reels, I give this film five movie reels. 10. Was there anything in this movie that could be related to me or anything I have written? I don't think I've written anything like this, although some people find my story Legend of the Boy disturbing. I admit that I love comedy and wish I could write it, but alas, it's just not my talent. Um, it's cool that Osborne is trying to uh, write a memoir, um, but I think he has two things going against him. One, he has no plan of attack. He's just, take, he's just talking aimlessly into a recorder. Two, he's not really interested in the project. Yes, it's a good distraction for him, but I don't think I don't think it's making him happy doing it. Let's see. Um, oh, I have been known to write some gruesome and scary villains, and although Harry isn't quite a villain, he is super sleazy. I mean, why bother being married if you're still trying to hump any passing female on two legs? Seriously, sorry, but I could rant if I wanted to there. Well, all that seems like a mouthful, but I hope it wasn't too painful. That's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this Toy Box Mover review of Burn After Reading, and hope you would join me again down the road for more reviews. Um, in the comments below, please tell me what you think of this film. Um, what would you have rated it? Share with me one of your favorite lines or scenes from the movie. Mine is when Brad Pitt's character of Chad tries to weasel a reward out of Osborne over the phone with his limited vocabulary. I don't think I've ever laughed so much at the use of the S word. Also, my next Toy Box movie review will be Timer. Have you seen this film? Even if you haven't, follow me on Twitter and tell me what you think of this film using the hashtag Toy Box Movies and you'll have a chance to be featured in my next episode. On Saturday, I'll be posting an episode of So Yeah, Cards, and that's a funny episode. But next Monday, I'll be posting Pop Quiz Pressure, and that's a lot of fun, too. And remember, if you're ever interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a Toy Box webisode, you can visit etoythomas.com to learn more. So, until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying, I think that authors should be just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya.